So the FTC recently just published their annual summary detailing exactly how much that they've made from their judgments or the lawsuits that they had done in 2019. They have already collected over $24 million from debt collectors. And guys, we're talking 24 million collected, not the actual amount that's owed to them. So because of that, I've decided that I would tell you, do a little bit of a story time to kind of break down exactly what uh, is one of the biggest methods that debt collectors are doing, which is technically illegal that they're doing to be able to recover debt from debtors. So my hope with this video is that you are going to be able to see kind of a behind the scenes look at what kind of shady tactics debt collectors are using and how you can go about making sure that you're not caught up in one of these schemes and end up losing money. Hey y'all, my name is Tommy Boboy, your credit and personal finance coach. If this is your first time on my channel, I'd like to say welcome. Uh, typically on this channel, I'll be posting things related to credit and personal finance. So if you're interested in improving your credit or achieving financial freedom, then be sure that you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of my future videos. Now the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission is a government organization that's pretty much tasked with protecting consumers, right? And what they really do is they focus on making sure that any type of scams or companies that are, um, are mistreating or defrauding customers are taken care of, right? Are handled legally and uh, depending on what happens with the case, they might even be passed on to like the FBI or something where they're going to be uh, pursued criminally as well. And to give you guys a little more background on how that works is basically anyone can file a complaint with the FTC. So if there's a company that maybe they stole money from you or they didn't fulfill on their promise whenever you paid them, then what you can typically do is you can go to the FTC and file a complaint. And they basically storing up all these complaints. You can think of it as like they're, they, they have a folder with that company's name on it and every complaint that they get they add it to the folder and eventually if that folder gets too big then they are pretty much going to send their lawyers to follow up and do an investigation and figure out what's going on and eventually depending on the situation file a lawsuit and try to uh, sue them for damages so lately they've been really aggressive with the financial services industry uh, more specifically with credit repair companies and debt collectors right and i can tell you being i actually uh full disclosure i own a credit repair company or credit repair agency and i have seen uh what goes on in the industry there's a lot of people who uh they're more in it to make a quick buck than actually try to to help people improve their financial situation so i definitely understand why they're why they're coming a lot more aggressively towards debt collectors and credit repair companies in this video i wanted to focus specifically on a tactic that a lot of debt collectors or shady debt collectors have started using and how the FTC is starting to crack down on it. Now, some of you guys might have already heard of this, but it's something called phantom debt. So a lot of debt collectors, what they do is they go out to buy this phantom debt and then they try to collect on it, even though it's technically illegal in most cases. And a lot of it hasn't been verified. Now, phantom debt, for those of you guys who don't know, is it's any debt that's really outdated, old, or has already been paid. So the idea being debt collectors will buy this phantom debt because it's a lot cheaper than getting than buying any other type of debt. So they'll buy this phantom debt. And then even if whether it's a debt that you've already paid from some other debt collector, they will still call you and try to collect this debt from you and see if they can make money off of it. Now, again, guys, this is a completely illegal. If this is something that's happened to you, then. Uh, I'll be talking at the end of the video about some steps that you can take to be able to uh, make sure that they're no longer calling you and just get this debt completely uh, rid of it or get this debt completely removed. So one of the top cases that the government actually went after last year was a company called Global Asset Financial Services Group. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful there. But so basically what it is, is it's a company out in North Carolina. The lawsuit had over 15 defendants on it. Uh, uh, pretty much they had a lot of different other companies connected to that company, as well as there was um, multiple people, multiple people that owned all those companies. Now, these guys were basically doing exactly what I was mentioning earlier is they were trying to uh, co falsely collect on phantom debt and were even going as far as telling people that they were going to sue them in court if the people didn't pay up immediately. Now, again, guys, that's it, that's another thing that's completely illegal. Debt collectors cannot 
uh, uh, claim that they're going to sue you unless they have every intention of doing so. And with these companies, they were just saying that just to find any type of scare tactics to uh, get people to pay up. And that was one of the reasons why they ended up getting shut down. Apart from just collecting on illegal debts, they were also wrongfully uh, claiming that they were going to sue people when they couldn't sue on that debt anyways. They ended up settling with the FTC and have to pay restitution of $25.5 million, right? And will more than likely be banned completely from the industry. So this just gives you an example, guys. There is debt collectors out there who aren't following the rules. So if you are experiencing things like that, you know, don't think that this is fewer and far in between or you're just, uh, you know, this is something that's normal, right? Or this is something that um, is supposed to happen. A lot of these guys are breaking the law and you're seeing that the FTC is starting to take action against them. Another case was a company that was actually called Direct Processing, right? And they were doing essentially the same thing as the global asset financial company. <laughs> they were basically trying to collect on phantom debt, but these guys decided to take it a step further. Channel 9's Mark Barber was the only reporter in federal court as victims of the debt collection scheme took the stand. Federal prosecutors say this man, Lawrence Sessom, was a mastermind running a Charlotte debt collection agency called Direct Processing. Prosecutors say it was a scam that squeezed more than $5.7 million out of thousands of people all over the country. The government says Sessom and a manager, Jacqueline Okamba, oversaw a staff of debt collectors. One of the victims who testified told jurors the debt collectors claimed they were serving a warrant for her arrest because she owed $2,500 to a credit card company. Okay, not only were they uh, trying to collect on the phantom debt, but they were claiming that they were issuing out arrest warrants. Uh, they were basically, what they would do is they would call you and then claim that they were part of the court system in your area and that they were actually issuing an arrest warrant because of a debt that you owed. Now they got even prosecuted, they got, were actually prosecuted even harder because they were also doing this specifically with elderly people, right? People who maybe they were, they, they, were, they were more willing to believe what these guys were saying. And in that case, what ended up happening is they ended up having to actually serve jail time. So what I'll do first is I want to play you guys a recording so y'all get an idea. Uh, this was a recording that was actually played during their court case of exactly uh, how they were actually talking to, this is basically a direct processing rep speaking with uh, one of the uh, debtors that they had on their list. And it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of things that they were saying that they should not have been saying over the phone and uh, how it was illegal. All right, so here's the call, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, run through it. Uh, we're not obviously gonna listen to this whole thing, but I'm just gonna skip through different sections of it so you guys can get an idea of just how far they were taking these calls, okay? And again, this, you, the first lady that starts talking is gonna be the, um, this is the rep. You'll be able to tell. Remember, this is just like a regular, you could say like a customer service rep. She, She's really just, uh, just a debt collector. She's supposed to call on behalf of the company and then collect, and that's it. But we'll just watch. I want you to hear how far she takes it. Uh, this is Chief Investigator Sharon. Right? Am I speaking with? Yes. <laughs> right off the bat, you can't you can't tell people you're a chief investigator, right? She just it's like you, she they they like to use different wording to make it sound like like they're um. Like maybe it's like some sort of authority or something, right? It's like a police officer or something, you know, just to get you to want to pay up because you're scared something might happen. Again, my name is Investigator Sharon Wright. I am investigating a criminal complaint that has been thwarted here in the office against you by Cash Express. We are in the process of proceeding against you legally. Now, prior to forwarding this to your local authorities and return them issuing a warrant for your arrest, I did want to contact you, get a statement, and find out exactly what were your intentions. But what what is this? I'm I'm not understanding. What is this? Cash Express is stating that you did walk into their facility to obtain a payday loan. I mean, of course, to hold it going from going legal, you know they want the money. Okay. However, you have and what what amount is this? Dollars and four cents. Okay, at this moment right now, I'm not working. We'll see what that can do. Now, I want to skip to a certain section here so you guys can just see how far these guys were taking it, right? None of them are being pursued. Okay. Hold on the remaining portion of the ballot being pursued. 
okay, so let me do that then because I don't want none of the... Because right now I'm actually pregnant, so I can't be going through stuff like this. Right. Uh, hold for and one I'm, month. And I'm, I'm actually seven... I'm actually eight months. I turn eight months next week. So hold I mean, for I one can't. moment. Let me talk with the attorney, okay? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, grab your checking information, and you let me know when you're ready. So pretty much what happened is they convinced her to pay. They said that she owed about $800, and they essentially convinced her to pay half of the money right away. Um, and you kind of heard what the lady just said. is like She's like pregnant at this point. They've threatened that like if she doesn't pay, then she could end up going to jail, right? And she's eight months pregnant, right? So she's about to have a baby. And probably the last thing that she wants to have to deal with is going in jail when she's supposed to be focusing on, like, getting ready to have a child. So this just kind of shows you how far these debt collection companies were taking, right? Um, and this was actually what they ended up showing uh, playing in court, right? So to give people an idea of what was going on. So, uh, yeah, just you, go, you really want to be careful whenever you're dealing with, uh, you, whenever you're dealing with any of these guys over the phone or whatever it is okay and just from that right there you can kind of see how far that they were willing to take it uh they ended up uh in total the entire time that they were running their operation they ended up stealing over 5.7 million from uh random consumers and what ended up happening in terms of a settlement is they ended up being pursued by the fbi and now they're both of the people that were pursued that were uh the main uh, conspirators in this operation. Uh, it was Lawrence, Lawrence Sessom. He was actually been sentenced to 11 years in prison and uh, Jacqueline Acomba was actually sentenced to six years. Okay, so both of them ended up getting jail time for what they were doing. And guys, that was that's pretty much gonna be the two biggest stories that the FTC dealt with. Again, they did a lot more cases than just the, these two. Uh, they're pretty much working year round trying to catch any type of debt collectors uh, amongst other industries, right? But guys, if you are ever in a situation where you're dealing with a debt collector and you think that they're doing certain practices that might not be legal or might not be above board, it can be things as simple as calling you too early. Uh, typically, debt collectors can't call past a certain or before a certain time or past a certain time, right? So, for example, they can't call you before 7 a.m. or after 7 or 8 p.m right so really it just comes up to you making sure that you're looking into these laws you're checking these laws in your area and what they are as well as the federal laws and if you feel that you are getting your rights violated be sure to reach out to a consumer rights attorney okay these guys are typically going to be working for free right they'll take your case on for free the way they make money is by suing the credit bureaus on your behalf and then afterwards they sue for uh, damages and that's how they get paid uh, they do the same thing with debt collectors, so on and so forth. So you want to reach out to these guys. Uh, so typically they take cases for free and they can be able to give you guys a little more guidance about what you should be doing. So try to find an attorney like that in your area. And guys, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Um, again, make sure that anytime that you are looking to pay a debt or anything like that with a debt collector, that you're making sure that you're validating the debt and you're getting all the information about where the debt came from before you actually make any payments towards it. Now, if you do wanna learn more about how to handle collection accounts, I actually did a little more of a deeper dive into uh, uh, how to handle debt collectors in another video. What I'll do is I'll link it down below in the description, so go ahead and check that out, and that'll walk you through exactly what you can do uh, if you are having to deal with a lot of debt collectors. Now, be sure to give us a like if this video brought you any value, and make sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of my future videos uh, if you're interested in improving your credit and being able to achieve financial freedom. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, guys, and that's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you at the next one.